Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions this morning with Pastor Sutton. Camera feels like it's in an odd spot. Oh well, we'll get over it. Uh, good morning. Uh, Greek Tuesday today. So I'm headed down to the uh, to uh, Merrill for Greek here in a, in, in a little bit. Um, means I gotta kinda get through this. And we've been longer every day because of the uh, additions with the Lent season, but good morning. I'm glad you're here with me to spend a little bit of time in God's Word on this on this Tuesday morning, February 28th, the last day of February. It's not leap year, so this is it. 28 days. That's all you get. Uh, let's see who's here with us this morning. I got to scroll back up here. Um, oh, I I didn't type a good morning. I guess. Um, well, good morning. <laughs> uh, Bonnie here, right away off the top. No wind, sunny skies, deceptively slick roads. Yeah, she told me she did a little flippy do as she was uh, coming out of out of the school today. So, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Numushtak, good morning and good evening to you. Here's Bonnie again. Uh, Ian Verna, good morning. Glenn, glad you're here with us. She's not wearing pink today, Glenn. That's helping us, I think. Uh, and there's Connie. Good morning, Connie. Saying hi to Bonnie, since I didn't put a hello on there. Um, looks like a nice day in Hershaw. All right. And I don't know what our high is supposed to be. Weather service says we're at 22 right now, but the, uh, uh, yeah, I can't see. Oh, 42? Okay. Ashley, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Uh, there is Ann and Deb. Good morning. Michael and Karen. Good morning. Periwinkle blue skies. All right. You know, that's all right to have blue skies. Jeannie and Bob. Good morning. Change of plans. Heading home because of snow. Heading to Michigan. Oh, okay. All right. So you're going a day earlier to try and get ahead of it, I'm guessing. Well, that'll be all right. That'll be all right. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. And uh, uh, Jerry, good morning. 38 degrees in Michigan. Wow. It's almost almost sitting on the porch having coffee weather. Almost. Not quite. Renee, good morning. I saw yesterday you posted a little later You were your schedule was messed up. I'm guessing they're dancing times around your stuff to get ready for Easter stuff maybe, but whatever. Uh, so good morning, good morning, glad you're all here with us. Uh, hello to those who are watching behind the scenes, maybe not chiming in, or those who are uh, watching later uh, today here on Facebook or over on uh, YouTube after I post this there at 11 o'clock this morning. I guess the comment to everybody, you know, that's, you watch something on Facebook or YouTube, the, the thing is uh, please like, share, um, in the case of Facebook, join our little group here so you get the notifications. And over on YouTube, like, share, hit the bell. That way you know when the post comes up. So, good morning. Let's uh, let's get right down into what we've got here. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer here, as usual, as we begin on this Tuesday morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our uh, psalm today, Psalm, let me find a button here, Psalm 104, Psalm 104, verses 1 through 9. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds of his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messenger messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that he should never be moved. 
You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took flight. The mountains rose, the valley sank down to the place that you appointed for them. Yet you set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they may not gain, may not again cover the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yeah. I, 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 the imagery of the Lord uh, being clothed with splendor and majesty, uh, that, that uh, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. It's a beautiful image. Um, these are, these, this is the, this is that which declares his majesty, the very creation of the, the heavens and the earth. Are, the, 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 the creation declares his, his majesty and his glory. All right, let's continue on here with our reading today from Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. So 15, 15 verses here this morning. Yeah, let's see what we have here. <clears throat> then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he indeed may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter... But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's, uh, there's, there's a lot here. I was going to say, there's one, th two, th three things, four things, five things. That's how come I can preach the same text again and again and again, because there's always good things here. The, the, the hard part is getting down to something that is preached uh, for only, preached only for, for 10 or 15, 15 or 20 minutes on a Sunday morning. Um, and, and here I have like three, because it's Greek Thursday, Greek Tuesday. Um, his family thinks he's out of his mind. How often do we hear that? You Christian, you're out of your mind to believe such things. Um, the prominent part here is the action of the scribes who come down from Jerusalem. Um, now, the scribes are the ones who um, record what the uh, preachers of the temple, what people are saying at the temple, what the teachings are. Um, and they make the copies. They make copies of the, of the uh, uh, scripture, the scrolls, to send out to synagogues so they can be used out in the, in the, in the synagogues throughout the land. 
So they're both copyists and writers. They also make a living writing documents for people. You can go to the temple and hire a scribe to write, write out your document for you. Peter, Peter and Paul and James, all the letters in the in the Bible, the the, the epistles, um, are are written by not the person who's they're attributed to, but by a scribe. You know, you didn't sit down with pen and paper and write your own uh, material. You 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 spoke it, and another person took it down. So these scribes come out from Jerusalem. So so we're making the distinction here. It's not the Pharisees. It's not necessarily anyone from the council, the Sanhedrin. Um, uh, it, it's not just your average Jew on the street. Um, it is it is a very it's an a, people who are in an office in the temple, the scribes, and 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 they're saying he's possessed by Beelzebul, which is a a, a, a servant of Satan. Uh, the prince of demons, um, and and he's working by this. Um, now, we know that's not the case, um, and we we know that he is truly God. But these men who are confused now remember they are they are already seeking to destroy him. They're what are they? They're. Their bosses, the Pharisees and the and the Sanhedrin, have already begun seeking ways to destroy him. Um, and so these these underlings, if you will, these scribes, are already speaking against him. Um, and Jesus begins to speak to them in parables. Okay, so he's not speaking directly; he's speaking around the topic with a greater meaning. Right? Can Satan cast out Satan? I mean, it's a good question. How can Satan cast out Satan? Well, he can't. He wouldn't. Why would he? That would be wrong. Mm. It would be wrong for him. It would be wrong for him, for Satan. Um, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And that's true. It's true. Um, yeah, Bonnie, Bonnie pointed out that, that President Lincoln, in the time of the, of the Civil War, made that statement as well. I mean, it's quoting scripture. Um, but yeah, you can't you can't have a kingdom in two pieces divided against itself. It won't it won't stand. Um, and one of the concerns about our nation right now, but I don't think we're as divided as we think we are. I think there are some who are creating division amongst us. You as ears let them hear. Um, if, if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. It's coming to an end. If, if, if it's true, if you're saying I am Beelzebul and I'm standing against Satan, then Satan's time is coming to an end, which is true. Right? The cross will be the end of Satan's time. Um, he cannot stand. Now hear this. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. The strong man here, the strong man, is it is it is it God or is it Satan? I mean, it, 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 this could be handled in different ways. It's a parable, right? It doesn't speak directly to what's at hand. So. If we take it that the strong man is Satan, who has who has usurped the authority of God in the Garden of Eden and gotten man to eat of the fruit of the garden and cause him to fall, and so now man belongs to the old wicked foe, then we are in his house. We're in the old wicked foe's house. We are born into his house, into sin. Um... But at the cross, at the cross, Christ binds Satan. He is bound. He becomes powerless when he sheds Christ's blood upon the cross. He loses all of his power. That doesn't mean he can't go trying to assert it, right? Um, even, even a, even a. Uh, what do I want to say? The CEO of a company um, 
after he's been terminated, if people in the company haven't been told yet and he calls them up, they're going to do what he says because he was the CEO. And his minions are still wandering around, whispering in your ears about your sins, reminding you that you're a sinful creature and that you are unworthy of Christ's forgiveness. But Jesus goes on to say that um, all the sins will be forgiven the children of men. You and I. Whatever blasphemies they are. Right? No matter what the scribes say at this point, they have the opportunity to be forgiven. They are children of men. All who hear the word of God are eligible, have the opportunity to receive the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Every single one. Every single one. Um, Yet Jesus makes it clear whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness. Forgiveness is given at the cross for all mankind. For everyone. Universal atonement. When Christ died on the cross, he did it for every person who's ever been born or ever will be born. Right? However, however, that gift is received by faith. The gift of forgiveness is received by faith alone. And so, as the scribes are saying he's possessed by Beelzebub, he has an unclean spirit, they are uh, uh, speaking against, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, where the spirit that is in Christ is the Holy Spirit. They sent it upon him as a dove in his baptism. And it is the Holy Spirit that helps us cling to that promise of forgiveness. So, if it's received by faith, but you have not faith, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, who teaches you and calls you by the gospel, then you can't be forgiven. It's not that Christ doesn't want to forgive you. It's not that the pastor in your church doesn't want you to be forgiven. It is that you refuse to be forgiven. Thank you, it's not for me. Please, I don't want it. It, Don't get this mistaken with accepting Christ in your heart, right? At the cross, he purchased and won you. He already owns you again. He bought you back from the devil. But that doesn't mean you can say, no, no, I'm not yours. I'm his. You've already been bought by the blood shed on the cross. The only thing you can do is reject it. Or you can live in it. And by faith, by faith alone, receive the forgiveness that comes from his blood shed upon the cross. Repent and believe. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is what Peter says. Repent, receive the baptism, receive baptism, or be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is for you and for your children. And in it, his forgiveness and life of the last day. Amen. Our uh, catechesis for today, um, Lenten catechesis, the second and third commandments, uh, coming from uh, the large catechism in the book of Concord, uh, section one again, which is the commandments, uh, paragraphs 51, 52, 54, 86, 87, 91, 92. So it jumps around a little bit. But it gets the point across. So the second and third commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. That's how we teach it now. Many of you learned it as you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. If someone now asks, how do you understand the second commandment? Or what is the what is meant by taking God's name in vain or misusing God's name? Answer briefly in this way. It means misusing God's name when we call upon the Lord, no matter how, in order to deceive or do wrong of any kind. Therefore, this commandment makes this point. God's name must not be appealed to falsely or taken upon our lips. Well, the heart knows well enough or should know that the truth of the matter is different. God's name cannot be misused worse 
than for the support of falsehood and deceit. But the greatest abuse occurs in spiritual matters. These have to do with the conscience. When false preachers rise up and offer their lying vanities as God's word. From Jonah chapter 2. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This is the simplest meaning of the third commandment. People must have holidays, therefore, or holy days, therefore, such observances should be devoted to hearing God's word, so that the special function of the day of rest should be the ministry of the word for the young and the mass of poor people. Yet the resting should not be strictly understood to forbid any work that comes up, which cannot be avoided. To sanctify the holy day is the same as to keep it holy. But what is meant by keeping it holy? Nothing else than to be occupied with holy words, work, and life. God desires the day to be holy to you. Therefore, it becomes holy or unholy because of you whether you are occupied on that day with things that are holy or unholy. God's word is the true holy thing. <laughs> he uses the word hyaligtium, or relic, holy thing, above all holy things. Yes, it is the only one we Christians know and have. God's word is the treasure that sanctifies everything. Whenever God's word is taught, preached, heard, read, or meditated upon, then the person and day and work are sanctified. This is not because of the outward work, but because of the word, which makes saints of us all. So from the large catechism, section one on commandments two and three. Let us continue with the Apostles' Creed. Uh, wait, the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus, triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, your, our, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning, in holy baptism, O triune God, you entered into my heart and made it your temple and dwelling place. Keep me always mindful of this high distinction whenever Satan seeks to seduce me by, to sin, to neglect your word and will, to dishonesty, selfishness, and envy. Help me to resist him in your strength, to beat back his attacks and obtain victory. Father in heaven, let me never forget that I am your child and that Satan's only purpose is to separate me from you. O Savior, Jesus Christ, keep your bitter suffering ever before me so that I hate and abhor every sin no matter how small it may seem. O Holy Spirit, who has regenerated me, keep me in this newness of life and let not Satan lure me back into the way that leads to eternal damnation. Triune God, keep me constant in your means of grace, the word and sacraments, that in the power of your might I might be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. 
Hear me in this, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings and assurance and comfort upon those who suffer on this day, whether it be body, mind, soul, or the drawing near of death. We ask you, O Lord, to be with those who suffer under the under the duress of, of uh, wicked leaders, and that all leaders would look to you for righteousness and strength, following your wisdom instead of the wisdom of man, and for those suffering under uh, the effects of natural disaster. We grant them comfort and, and aid in the searches for those who are lost in rubble. We pray especially for those today who have asked for our prayers, Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden, Shar, Deanna, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength, Lord, in the face of suffering, and remind them always that you suffered for them upon your holy cross. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll conclude today with uh, Luther's little morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion to a close for today. I'm going to get this uploaded to YouTube. Remember, like, share, comment, etc. Uh, and uh, 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 we'll see you back here tomorrow for our daily devotions together. God's peace be with you. Got to find the right button here.